Yeah, the basic idea is um, to, to reduce CO2 with re renewable energy. Uh, to produce from CO2 uh, with this energy input uh, chemicals like methane, methanol, uh, fuels like kerosene uh, or even diesel um, and a lot of different building blocks in the chemical industry including polymers and plastics. Plants have a very low efficiency. They can utilize perhaps about 0.2% of the solar energy in biomass but with the new chemical processes uh, we try to utilize 10% uh, of the solar energy via CO2 in chemicals and fuels. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. Um, on the one hand we can um, uh, come to very new applications for solar. So in the past we couldn't use solar to produce chemicals and polymers. This is possible now and we can store the energy. Uh, to store it in, in, uh, in fuels is high density and we can store it for many many years without losing energy. Uh, so to produce from the surplus of solar and wind uh, fuels is a good idea to store solar energy. The technology problems are very low. Many of the technologies are easy to upscale. The main problem are, is the economy of the process. Uh, today, the fuels or chemicals produced from solar and CO2 cost about two to four times more than the fossil ones. This is the main problem. Um, so finally, today it's a political decision. If you would like to have those chemicals and fuels with very, very low carbon footprint, uh, then they need a political framework where we, they can be produced and sold. There is a deep interest um, from industry to find uh, other carbon sources than fossils. And uh, with biomass, we have also limitations and food discussion. Uh, so I think the worldwide industry would be very happy uh, to uh, use CO2 as a carbon source. Um, so there is a lot of investment going on. For example, aviation fuel is a very hot topic, how to reduce the carbon footprint from aviation fuels. Uh, the alternatives like algae, uh, or yatropha or bio waste uh, are very limited and also very expensive. So I think that the first big application could be aviation fuels. I think that this is putting extra cost on the process. What we think is uh, more favorable in the beginning is to use CO2 emissions from industrial uh, plants or even from uh, coal uh, power plants. Um, there we have a lot of CO2 we could uh, capture, purify and use in processes. Uh, this will be cheaper for the next 10-20 years and then later we will be able also to absorb CO2 directly from the atmosphere uh, to low prices. In principle there is no limitation. Um, if you, if you use, uh, we calculated this, if you use 5 to 10 percent of the desert area in the world, you can substitute uh, all fossil energies. So you can uh, cover the complete uh, energy and chemical demand of the world uh, by 5 to 10 percent of the desert. Um, and you can then use the solar energy to produce um, fuels and chemicals. So at the end there is no limitation, um, but it's a long way to go. When we're only talking about um, how um, solar energy is done today, uh, we could uh, face some shortages, that's, that's true. Um, but when we see which uh, parallel technologies are developed, we have also organic uh, photovoltaic cells, we have uh, uh, cells with uh, complete other um, materials. So I think uh, in the next uh, 20, 30 years, we will see a lot of different options to utilize solar energy. We have also not only solar, we have wind, we have hydro, we have geothermal energy, we have ocean 
transmission ener energy, and all these energies can be utilized uh, for CO2 economy. Uh, so I, I don't think that we're running, uh, we're running in problems, but we have, of course, further developed technology from today. The investment is, um, is in the same order uh, as five years military budget. So that means it's not impossible. If you would have a planet where everywhere is enough energy and uh, raw materials for the chemical industry, this would also uh, lower all uh, problems and wars. So we can also create a peaceful world where we don't need a military budget anymore uh, by the solar CO2 technologies. I think the mixture between research, investment and uh, political regulations could speed up this process. If we wait till the fossil resources are gone, 50, 100 years, then this technology will, will come anyway. And the only question is why we should uh, emit before 50 years uh, fossil resources uh, to the, to, for the climate change uh, if the technology is already here today. So I think we should not wait 50 years till we have to switch to the technology, but we can also switch much earlier.